Hello and welcome back to the brewery after a very long break. Today we're going to look at something I've spent quite a long time developing and building which is 3D printed digital tap handles. I've been thinking of building some more taps for my uh, fridge for a while and doing something more technically interesting seemed like a challenge. I'd seen a Raspberry Pi Pico with a display mounted on top of it on the internet and quickly found a 3D printed box that someone had designed to fit it in. My initial thoughts were to design a tap handle using this box as a basis and then send it off to somebody to get it printed. But after a bit of thought, I decided it'd be much easier to buy my own 3D printer and it would allow me to try lots of little experiments along the way until I found a version of the tap handle that worked well for me. So, my first design here, I was building, designed in Shape of 3D. After going through a few tools, I found this was the one that was most intuitive from my point of view to use. Uh, you sort of sweep uh, the drawings you've done in 2D through 3D and then adjust them to make the, the models. It's quite, it's quite easy to use. So the first version I, I designed used this box that I found on the internet that fitted the display and the Pico exactly and extended it a bit to allow some wires to fit in. I added a, a, a tube on the bottom that was sort of clipped on uh, through which you could feed a flat USB cable. I found this, this flat low profile USB cable online and I used these at various stages throughout the build. While this design worked reasonably well, I built I in the threading into the handle and this wasn't very good uh, and got a bit stuck and I didn't really like the overall look. So I went back to design software and built something a little more chunky, uh, a little, little more looking like one solid part. Um, it still used the same slot to slot, slot the um, USB cable through uh, and was still used the had to be wide so that I could fit the USB connector on the end of the Raspberry Pi Pico. In this case, I moved to gluing a uh, threaded adapter into the bottom of the design because yeah, drawing threads is real pain in the 3D world. This one also worked well, but was very wide as you can see. Uh, and they nearly clashed into each other when they were on the um, kegerator. So I thought around, thought a bit more about this and found that you could power the, the Pico off some of its, uh, its pins on the, on, the, on the board itself. Obviously I still needed these pins to be able to attach on the display. So I found some double-ended uh, pins you could mount there. So you had a, a, a pin on one end and a socket on the other. Uh, I redesigned the tap handle to be narrower and in this time to have a slot down the back leading to a small USB-C um, little shim thing that once again you can buy off the internet links at the bottom uh, to provide the power. So in this case you wire, wire it, you put the Raspberry Pi inside with a screen on the front, you drop the wires down the slot in the back uh, to where they're, they're soldered onto the board with the USB connector on it and from there you can provide power and the back just clips on reasonably tidily. I'm not that great a designer in 3D yet so the clip is brilliant it, though it just about works. It works well enough really for a, for a tap handle. A brief aside on the 3D printers I've used here. So originally I had an Ender 3 Neo which is a great hobbyist printer and a good intro to, the, the, to being able to just build things whenever you want them. Uh, but you do need to spend nearly as much time making the printer work as you do actually printing things. Most of the tap handles you see here were printed on that and it does a very good job, if quite slowly. The video you're seeing in the background is from my newer 3D printer which is a Bamboo P1S. This is a much more designed to actually just print things rather than spend all your time fiddling with the machine. It can also do multicolor prints which is quite nice. I've ended up printing an awful lot of things around the house from everything from hooks to hang rubbish bags in the car to shelf mounts uh, to art for downstairs that looks really good. But it's an interesting hobby and you will end up printing a lot more things than you expect you do. 
choosing which way up you print something on the 3D printer is an interesting decision you need to make because the surface that goes downwards ends up being somewhat less good quality than all the rest of them. So in the end with these I've tended to print them uh, with upside down effectively upside down to how they appear on the tap which means that the sort of rough surface is on the top and is really not very visible. When you 3D print for something, you also end up printing supports so that overhanging things don't, well, fall off or sag in the printing process. This, I've used a sort of natural tree type, sort of kind of support here, which is usually the easiest to get off. I wrote some very, very flaky software. Sorry, I'm not going to provide this software. It's far too flaky. That effectively goes and picks up the image when you press one of the buttons. Uh, or when you boot the device from a website running in an S3 bucket on AWS. Uh, there's some backing software on that where you drag and drop the, in fact, you drag and drop some beer XML, uh, which contains the name and style of the beer, and then that just renders it over the top of the static image, which is one I've used for my beer labels for a very long time. These are now good. I've printed several of them. There's one on each tap. I've, the ones on there I've printed in multicolored filament. Uh, other ones I've printed in plain ones like this red one. You've, I've been showing you how it works on. Files for this are now uploaded to Thingiverse if anyone's interested in copying them and extending the project or printing their own tap handles. Once again, link in the description below. Well, hopefully there won't be as long a break this time and I hope you enjoyed that content. So if you build something like this, let me know. I'm very interested in other people's builds. So I hope you enjoyed that and I will see you in another video.